So I'm going to introduce you guys to my new camera tool. Uh, you can download it um, as part of my script pack. And here it is, my camera resolution tool. And I made this because um, I'm a bit frustrated with the default Max setup. Uh, mainly because it has no modern cameras. All these old cine cameras. One HD TV setting. PAL. Does anybody use PAL anymore? Seriously. Um, so just got that one HD TV setting and it's fixed the aperture width. And that's not the aperture width. Um, doesn't even mean anything because it should be a film back width. Uh, so that's very annoying. Anyway. So, um, we have a database of modern cameras, um, which you can use to try and match stuff that's on set. Um, the camera data is stored as a text file, it's very simple, we've got the name of the camera, some pixel values, and the width of the film back in millimeters. And uh, that's just in my um, Kensal scripts directory camera track camera data dot text so I've been getting uh, the camera data from this guy the black and blue digital cinema pocket guides uh, they seem to be pretty accurate um, and uh, reasonably cheap um, if you need all the extra data but um, probably just need um, this the x and y values of uh, um, the uh, captured frame and the equivalent film back. Um, if you guys want to add some more cameras there you can, if you want me to add some more to the list then um, send me the details and I'll check it out and I'll add it to the list myself and then release it. Okay so we have uh, in here we have some custom proxies so um, the standard proxy sizes are hard coded and if you use custom settings they don't change so you can see that as we change um, the resolution here the proxy is all the same so when you try and use one of these proxies the aspect ratio changes so it's no good because uh, we want our proxy sizes to not affect our frame so you can see if I use um, if you're looking at this frame I've changed the proxy size here my frame changes which is annoying I don't want that um, I want my proxy size to stay the same so that I can just quickly go and render small images so you can see that um, changing the proxies on my tool doesn't affect the uh, f aspect ratio but you can see now it's um, resetting the width and height of the frame so I can quickly render out um, a low res image if I want to oh it's not that button Link that one yes it's got a tiny image and quickly a big image there we go yes off the screen um so that's that you can um maybe I'll pick an Alexa you can make your own custom cameras uh the camera data is stored in a um the properties file properties custom so um, you can see it's got the camera name, the resolution, the film back and the current proxy so that mean, means when I close the tool and relaunch it again uh, it still remembers my proxy settings and it will also make a guess at how I've extended the frame um, and that will be the same is if you save the file and load it again. If you want, you can also, um, if you were say working on a whole bunch of shots in the same camera, you can also save um, your default. This data, because it's a file property data, it will also get all this stuff will get saved in your max start. So if I save as, and that you can find your max start in. 3ds max scene so if you save that as your max start file 
um, wherever your project scene directory is um, then that will get loaded um, every time you reset max or start new file which is quite useful um, I also use it to um, make sure that um, I work in PAL because I'm not in America and in the UK we use PAL so um, that means my default settings are PAL or film if I'm working on a film project uh, anyway I got distracted right so let's launch the tool again around so we've got proxies we've got custom cameras um, I can if I've got some weird or some something that's not included on the list I can go and adjust the camera here now you can see when I make an adjustment to this camera here I want to make adjustment to the height the width remains and this this operates in the same way that um, Max does. Oh, you can also see that this doesn't match up because that's I've got a proxy setting on. So this proxy setting is a half, half of the project area. So this is your project resolution. This is your proxy resolution. That's the project resolution. That's proxy one, proxy two, proxy three. So proxy one is a half res, quarter res, and then an eighth res for very, very small images. So as I adjust here, I'm adjusting the project resolution you can see that this number is changing and um, this is the height there we go now the important thing to note is when I adjust the project resolution when I adjust the height you can see that the horizontal so I'm adjusting the width of the frame here and you can see that the horizontal field of vision doesn't change which is kind of what we want we want the um, image to remain roughly the same as we mess around with the height so if we just go in and afterwards we want to set our resolution that's fine however it says that to 20 mil. however if we want to um, extend the frame well, we need um, the frame to change as we change the width of the frame. Um, so you can do that using the overscan tool. So, and this will simultaneously change, and this is the key, will change the width of the frame, and will change the film back width of the frame, and will also preserve the lens size. And if you do all that at the same time, like this, you'll be able to extend the frame and you can see that um, the height of the frame is remaining the same, we're just at padding out the edges of the frame with exapixels so if I reset that uh, so and also the way this works it um, also preserves proxies so you can see that all the proxy resolutions are preserved as I do things so if I render out this frame yes there we go. Um, well I've got this infusion. So say I want to, um, for some reason, extend the frame. Maybe I want to do some motion blur at the edges or some other thing. Then I need to uh, do an overscan. So let's say uh, pick dial in an overscan. Let's make it um, something like 120 percent. So that is 2,000. 304 pixels. So now if I render this again, I'm going to save it to a different location. Files. Instead of HD, this is going to be called HD underscore overscan. Save. Render that. Off it goes. So now if I load this into Fusion, open, there you go, right, so I've got two images, and you can see that they're both exactly the same, apart from one is wider than the other, which is exactly what we want if I want to do an overscanned image. Uh, 
Okay, so we have overscanning. Um, oh yeah, and there's one last thing. So if we just reset that. So um, once you've got a scene in Max and you're working on it, say it's a, a matte painting or something, or a digital matte, you're doing some modeling, you set up your camera, everything's matched up, and you're zooming around, doing some things, modeling, and everything's really slick, of course, in Max. And you go back into your camera to have a look, and it's looking good, and then you do this. Whoosh, you're not thinking about it, and everything gets moved. Uh, so if you're in the middle of rendering, uh, you're doing some render passes or something, you can move this ever so slightly, and you won't notice until you come to composite. And that is a pain. Um, so I highly recommend um, that camera. Now, if you want to um, lock the camera, it's a little bit of a pain. You have to go into uh, the motion, the hierarchy panel, or into link info, and you want to go through and you want to lock all of this stuff. And then you need to go into the camera target, into the camera target, and you need to do the same again. Okay, and that's a little bit of a pain. Uh, so, again, I've written this tool. Um, so if you click that down, it will lock everything. If you unclick it like that, it will unlock everything. If you've got the camera selected, so I select the camera, and I do that, I'll just lock the, and unlock the selected camera. And it will also find the camera's target and do that as well, I'll unlock that. So once you've locked the camera, once all that is in place, I'm messing around and doing some modeling. Um, I can be just zooming around like this and then go back to my camera to have a look and then if I accidentally try and drag, you can see the camera remains fixed and that's really helpful because um, I have messed up one too many shots by dragging things around. Okay, so there we have it. That is my um, camera resolution tool. Um, let me see. I have written up, there's a bunch of stuff on my site about pinhole camera mass, um, how that works. Um, I may at some point do a video about this. It's not very hard. It's just the relationship between field of vision, focal length, and film back width. And that's it. Uh, my site is, um, here we go, www.designimage.co.uk. Um, Oh yeah, and uh, of course you can get to my site by pressing that button. Off it goes. I hope that's useful to you guys. I know it's very useful for me. And um, I look forward to hearing from you all.